Hi folks, as you know, I am not in my current home environment right now and I'm aware of the headroom and other issues with the quality of this video, but I think it's more important I get this video out because wherever I am, it's busy enough that I was not able to do this video yesterday. And I think you know that I generally like to do my new moon videos after the new moon. I find it's interesting. I do find that if I post a video after a new moon as opposed to about 48 hours prior to a new moon, characteristic of the energy, the video gets more circulation after a new moon than before the new moon. Now, this could just be, you know, especially those who've been watching this, that I'm a skeptical astrologer. I like to really make sure that I feel like I'm getting enough um, validation for things that are meant to be predictive. Um, but but it's certainly something I'm watching and experimenting with. Now, all of that said, all of that said, um, I'm going to trust that the timing is right. I apologize if you were looking for this video earlier, and here it is. As I was preparing for this video, I just was so glad that I was able to do the last two videos, specifically on Venus and Scorpio and Mercury retrograde in Capricorn and Sagittarius, because they both play a role when it comes to the new moon in Sagittarius. As always, 48 odd hours prior to a new moon, the energy is 12th housey. Um, there could be fatigue, exhaustion, completion, um, behind the scenes feelings, irrespective. The, the, the 48 odd hours prior to a new moon can often bring up because the moon is going to go through the sign that the last new moon was in, in this case Scorpio, on its way to getting into Sagittarius, on its way to a new moon occurring, the 48 to 72 hours, especially the 48 hours prior to a new moon, can bring up some sort of closure or thematic resonance around where the last new moon occurred on its way to moving into the next sign and creating a new moon there, provided the new moon is in the next sign and not as it is in rare occasions twice in the same sign. And also the moon, our energy, our, well, I should not use the word energy. I, that really does need to be associated with Mars. Our emotional and intuitive, the ancients, especially in Jyotish, in ancient Indian astrology, the moon is made to stand for us and the way we are interacting with the world more than the sun. And... 48 hours before a new moon, we are depleted and tired and need to rest and things are flat and they're not moving or they're not productive. And it's after the new moon that things can start to grow again. I call it sort of the wind behind the sails feeling can start again. Now, the new moon in Sagittarius, of course, comes up while the sun necessarily is in Sagittarius. Mars is in Sagittarius. Mercury was in Sagittarius since November the 10th. December the 1st, it moved into Capricorn. It retrogrades today, December the 13th, moves back into Sagittarius around December the 22nd, 23rd, and then goes direct on January 1st or 2nd. And in the by the middle of January, it is in Capricorn again. And whatever these transits are that occur, these personal planet transits that occur, in the same sign around in the same at the, around the same time every year because mercury and venus at least are traveling close to the sun the sun is going to be in the same sign at the same time every year give or take a day or two so whatever internal review communication opportunities may be being stirred up by these transit. It's the new moon energy that we look for to actually create the month derived from the word moon in that sign. As some of you know, when people talk about Sagittarius season, they're typically talking about the sun's transit through Sagittarius. Whereas for me, a season really extends from when the first of these personal planets enters a sign to when the last of these personal planets, and I'm speaking of Mercury, Venus, the Sun, 
sometimes Mars, if it is close to these planets reasonably, and either when the last of the planets leaves or when the next new moon in the next sign occurs. So I think, but it is those four weeks of the new moon where we can expect ourselves to be taking more directed action and for whatever is brewing as part of the Mercury, Sun, Mars transits in that part of the chart. For it to somehow be concretized in such a way that action can take place and results can take place. Now, this particular new moon makes two interesting transits, and this is why I am so glad that I did the Mercury retrograde video just before this, because it picks up all those themes, and I'm going to put a link once I process this video to both my last two videos at the end of this. You can certainly find them in my video list as well. As I've mentioned, the planets that are currently transiting through Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn are in direct communication with either or Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus, Chiron and the North Node in Aries, Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. With the Aries and Taurus energies, they are more forward moving and they are asking us to lean into those parts of the chart that require and can create growth for us. There's a certain amount of excitement, there's a certain amount of new beginnings, there could be significant change in both the Aries and the Taurus part of the chart, particularly the Taurus part of the chart. Jupiter can, can end cycles and does end cycles, I find, to create the new beginning. They go hand in hand. And when it comes to Neptune and Saturn and Pisces, it's a question of managing crises there and a certain messiness in the Pisces part of your chart that needs to now be addressed responsibly and solutions need to be put in place and a stronger foundation needs to be built with Saturn's transit through Pisces to the end of 2025. I've already talked about Venus's transits through Scorpio and what it is triggering and supporting and needs to serve. Specifically, there's a certain amount of support between Venus and Scorpio and Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. And Venus and Scorpio needs to figure out how she can serve Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. From the Sagittarius part of our chart, Neptune and Saturn in Pisces are being squared. So some sort of urgent action needs to be taken in the Sagittarius part of our chart to help Saturn and Neptune complete or progress, make progress in whatever positive changes they want to make in the Pisces part of the chart. And the planets going through Sagittarius trying harmoniously support Chiron and the North Node in Aries. This new moon in particular trines the North Node in Aries and squares Neptune in Pisces. When it comes to the North Node, this is where we are called upon to develop and grow. When it comes to Neptune in Pisces, we may either lean into a certain amount of spirituality or artistic um, or, or, or fantasy-based inspiration in whatever it is that we can use that for, or very often we're dealing with either a kind of self-delusion or not being able to see matters clearly or feeling like or actually going through the process of some sort of deception or gaslighting or thievery or shady behind the scenes behavior with Neptune and Pisces. With the new moon, it trines the North Node. So it will likely bring opportunities in the Sagittarius part of the chart that somehow look to and support the North Node's transit through Aries, where we need to, in a grounded manner, respond to what we're being called upon to do.
where we're being called upon to grow, where we're being called upon to lean into. Often this can come with the spirit of adventure or expansiveness. But it's important to remain grounded with the North Node. But it's a new moon that can very much create those opportunities. Do not underestimate a new moon that trines the North Node. I think it was the Virgo new moon in the middle of September that did the same thing as well. The challenge with the Virgo new moon, now the, a new moon will bring activity and opportunities and forward movement in that part of the chart. But as in the case of the Virgo new moon, Mercury was stationary at the time of that new moon and Mercury ruled and dispositive that new moon. So we knew that while opportunities for the Virgo part of the chart may show up, there would be a delay and a revision associated with whatever those new developments were. There could be confusion. This time, again, with the new moon trining the North Node, we have Mercury stationary. In a sign that is not quite so related to um, the new moon in particular, other than the fact that a retrograde Mercury is somehow linking the Capricorn and Sagittarius parts of our chart. What is it that this Mercury retrograde, what is it that this Mercury retrograde will bring up anything that is in our blind spot in such a way that it causes us to adjust our plans over the next few weeks and even as we head towards January 1st or 2nd? As I said in my Mercury retrograde video, if you have Mercury retrograde in your birth chart, these developments may make you feel more decisive, as if progress is actually being made. For the rest of us, we may need to deal with information that may even feel disappointing because we've been moving forward with certain assumptions in place, and now those assumptions, now things become real. Mercury says, hold on a second, let me reverse through these degrees since where I've been traveling since November 25th, and where I'm going to continue to travel till January 21st, and let me present to you what it is that you need to be aware of and what it is that you need to know. But Mercury is not ruling or dispositing this particular new moon. So opportunities may still continue to come to us, may need to be looked at and examined in the Scorpio part of the chart with Venus's transit there. And opportunities to the, related to the new moon may need to be heeded with the understanding that if you have Mercury direct in your birth chart, you need to be very careful of, you may be dealing with a certain, there is not clarity yet with regard to where we're gonna be and what we're gonna do after January 2nd. And if you agree to do something between now and January 2nd, it is possible or likely that after January 2nd, by January 5th, 6th, as you head into January, you may realize that there's more to the situation than you thought. And in some cases, given the fact that we're juggling these dual energies, one that is saying move forward in the Sagittarius part of the chart in a way that aligns with the Aries part of the chart, and the way that action can be taken to manage and may need to be taken to manage Neptune's transit in Pisces, are we having to manage some sort of deceitful behavior in the Pisces part of the chart? Are we having to um, figure out how to stabilize issues around our own lack of clarity over certain matters that may make us feel or may actually have us contending with issues that are deceitful or problematic in the Pisces part of the chart that have been going on since 2014, 15, 16? And how can we take action in the Sagittarius part of the chart to manage that so that a stronger foundation can be built, a, a cleaner, more responsible to us, more karmically conscious um, edifice can be built in the Pisces part of the chart. So trining the North Node, squaring Neptune and Pisces, and the trine with North Node creates the harmony and the opportunity the square requires us to move forward in the Sagittarius part of the chart in such a way that we can also achieve what we are trying to achieve in the Pisces part of the chart with regard to managing Neptune's energy there. So I keep being reminded of the Two of Pentacles in the tarot for anyone who is interested. On the one hand, we're juggling 
finally a certain amount of forward movement that feels like we are looking at various opportunities and looking to see what is aligned and where we want to go. And we may have articulated some goals for us all the way back in July and into August. And of course, we wanted to move forward then, but then we had Mercury retrograde between the end of August and September 15th, so we had to contend with the reality check that we got then. Now we're ready to move forward again, and yet there's another reality check that needs to be processed somehow. The second thing that is being juggled, of course, is the fact that Mercury is retrograde. So classically, we do not make commitments at the time when Mercury is retrograde. We do not sign contracts. We are waiting for things to emerge. We do not commit to things because we are waiting for things to emerge so that they become clearer. So we have this challenge where may, things may come up and we feel like we need to commit to them. And there could be, of course, scheduling challenges and confusion regarding communication and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we need to somehow just be clear that whatever it is that we may feel like we have, sometimes we can postpone commitments and sometimes we can't. And there is this juggling act with this new moon in Sagittarius that we are contending with. So sometimes we may get to a point where we have to make some sort of a commitment to have to make some sort of choices while Mercury is retrograde, doing our best, this is why I paused to just see what message I wanted to give here, doing our best to ensure that we're clear about the details to the best of our ability. What is in our control to make sure that if we are signing a contract, that the details are clear, that everything that has been said verbally also makes its way into the contract as appropriate, that there are no errors, even minor errors, even snafus. So as long as we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's to the best of our ability, we're left then with the question of, okay, I am making this commitment after January 2nd, 3rd. What is it just being open to the fact that something about it may change or may need to be reformed and may ultimately be benign, but how we are planning to move forward in the next three weeks will likely be different after Mercury goes direct. And Mercury will continue to of course, go over the same degrees that it's retrograding over through January the 20th. And all these details and Mercury retrograde, and, and if you have Mercury retrograde in your birth chart, of course, you, this, could be, this could be a different experience for you. You might find that you are more decisive over the next three weeks over certain issues. But the larger question becomes that after Mercury goes direct, how are others going to feel about the fact that they may have committed to something, and by others I mean others who have Mercury direct in their birth chart, how do they feel about whatever it is that you have committed to over the past, over the three weeks that Mercury was retrograde? I don't want to say more about this other than it's a new moon that is encouraging action and opportunity and growth and forward movement. But at the same time, there's something about the Capricorn and the Sagittarius part of the chart that is in... Uh, communication, cognition, organization, limbo. Either more information needs to come to the surface or people are making decisions based on maybe even sometimes a sense or a feeling of urgency, not looking at all the details, making commitments only to find on the other end that after Mercury goes direct to that, well, this is how things need to roll and we all will need to adjust to it. I don't I, when you have a new moon that is trining the North Node, this comes back to Okisabi, what is your advice? Look, the other two transits that are being made that this new moon is encoding are Mercury trining Jupiter, stationary but trining Jupiter. And I talk about this in the Mercury retrograde uh, video I just did because Mercury makes two transits. Interestingly, Mercury trines Jupiter, Again, an expansive trine towards the planet Jupiter and Taurus, where Jupiter is trying to create an auspicious new beginning, ending a 12-13 year cycle, starting a 12-13 year cycle. Like the North Node, expansive, 
calling us to our purpose, adventurous, connected somehow mysteriously with spirit and our purpose, expansive. But at the same time, Mercury is also going to square Neptune three times, just as it's going to trine Jupiter three times. At the time of this new moon, Mercury has completed its first trine. It's going to go retrograde today, and I think on the 19th, it's going to trine Jupiter again. So, as Mercury trines Jupiter again for the second time, it may well be that as you head towards the 19th, it could be communication about past opportunities that come back around, that again are somehow supporting Jupiter's transit in Taurus and the new beginning that is trying to be created there. Remember, we just got done with a set of eclipses on October 28th in the Taurus and Scorpio parts of the chart. It may all still have a kind of an eclipsy feeling, even though the eclipses have now moved into Aries and Libra. And of course, there's this scene that where there's expansiveness, there's still, for some reason, a need to manage issues related to the Pisces part of the chart that have a delusional or deceptive quality that could be an impediment to this forward movement if not managed and handled. But again, the new moon in Sagittarius, the two transits that are not related to the new moon that are being encoded are both trines and opportunities and harmonizing cooperative transits. Mercury in Capricorn trining Jupiter in Taurus and Mars in Sagittarius trining Chiron in Aries. Mars in Sagittarius trying to heal something in the Aries part of the chart that has needed to be fixed all the way back from childhood. Some action, it could be some combative situation, it could be um, it could be a place where a certain amount of our energy is going. It could be where we have to stand up for ourselves. It could be, you know, it's Mars is both the hunter-gatherer and the pursuer of opportunities, but it's also the protector and the protector of our own boundaries. How do you harness Mars's energy? Are you going to be attacked by it? And so then are you going to defend or are you going to be proactive about certain situations? That may also be somewhere in the air, but there is a kind of support to the Chiron part of the chart. So we've got three important trines, the new moon trine of the North Node, Mercury in the middle of two consecutive trines to Jupiter, and it could actually be that as we head towards the end of this week and into early next week, either opportunities from the past that support or are in cooperation with Jupiter's transit through Taurus come up again, with Mercury being retrograde, and that could create this choice of do I take some of these newer opportunities that have come up or do I take this older opportunity that is coming up? And then the second part of this puzzle is that even if in the last week certain things have come up, as you head past Mercury retrograde and into the middle of next week, there could be a revision or a need to relook at certain details related to that. What is fascinating to me is that we somehow still have to wait till January to have the third and final trine. There is this really impatient and frustrating pause related to clarity that takes us into January. And part of this is our own mental perception of feeling like January the 1st is the start of the year and we should go and move forward. But what we move forward to and what that looks like is only going to start the cake, is only going to souffle, is only going to start to set after January 3rd or 4th, even if we make commitments prior to that. The actual sense of how we're moving forward and what we're contending with and what reality looks like for the majority of the time, which is when Mercury is direct, is only going to become present to us after January the 3rd or 4th or 5th. And we may feel actively impatient feeling like we want to head into the new year with a clear map. But it's unlikely that we're going to have it. Even if you feel you have one based on the decisions that you've made, 
they may need to be you, the, the clarity that you're looking for is unlikely to be with you until the first two weeks of January, which is emotionally and mentally frustrating because we are going to feel like we want to get into the new year with a clear path. With, with a clear path. And as I said, even if you feel like you're moving forward with a clear path, it's unlikely to be completely clear until after January 3rd, 4th, 5th. So the advice, obviously, with these three trines, and trines particularly to North and Jupiter, have to be take advantage of opportunities. At the same time, just know in the back of your mind, if decisions are being made, and particularly if you have Mercury direct in your birth chart, make sure details are ironed out to the best of your ability, and just be prepared that as long as you feel that the decisions you're making are in alignment with the North Node in Aries and Jupiter's transit in Taurus, assume perhaps that whatever decisions that are being made that may, details around which may appear actually after January 3rd, 4th, 5th, that there may be a reason for it, that these could be stepping stones towards something else, that it may not be the final enchilada but yet you have done your best to honor the North Node in Aries and Jupiter and Taurus. And if the Mercury retrograde direct process is going to create a reshuffle in the first two or three weeks of January, then so be it, because maybe we just need to trust that we will at least be that much further along in our North Node and Jupiter and Taurus journeys. The new moon itself in Sagittarius, of course, ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is in Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus is in Scorpio, ruled by Mars, which is in Sagittarius. So we have a kind of dis kind of a dispository energy between Mars, which is trining Chiron, and Jupiter and Venus. We've also got with Scorpio being ruled by Pluto, Pluto and Capricorn, Saturn being in Pisces. Pisces being ruled by Jupiter, so we've got a kind of disposition between Jupiter and Saturn and Venus. And if we look at Neptune being the dispositor of Venus where Saturn is, then Neptune also is a dispositor. So it's funny, I'm saying this, and all the players that are involved in this new moon and everything that I've mentioned are also kind of overseeing this new moon, Saturn. Neptune, Jupiter, Venus. What is interesting and frankly a little bit relieving to me is that Mercury is not really involved in ruling or dispositing the new moon chart. This is why it makes me feel like it's you will have to pursue opportunities. You may also have to make commitments, but there's something between the Mercury retrograde and direct between Capricorn and Sagittarius that is linking a certain amount of cooperative energy between the Sagittarius and Capricorn parts of the chart and will not get ironed out in a way that really feels has legs until the first two weeks of January or beyond. And so we may just have to move forward honoring the North Node and Jupiter to the best of our ability realizing that we're doing the best we can based on what we know right now. And by the time we get into January, we will take it from there. If something was more temporary than we thought, but it has gotten to a certain point that opens up other vistas, then maybe these choices will make more sense. So have a sense of your compass. With the Venus retrograde that happened in July, I've mentioned to you that there was something that we decided that we would move towards and it has had stops and starts and false starts. And we are unfortunately again, for some mysterious reason, in the space of a false start again. Now, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll say that. But a start has to be made. Just because Mercury retrograde is going to bring reality about something does not mean that pursuing that something was wrong in the first place. And this statement I just made is the most, I feel, important part 
of this video. So whatever it is that the new moon Sagittarius brings up that is in alignment with Jupiter and the North Node, my 10 cents is pursue it, take full accountability for the decision making and making sure that the details are in place to the best of your ability so that when things start to become a little bit chaotic as we head into January and those commitments that were made while Mercury's retrograde, and watch these dates, watch these dates, watch last week and the next week, because it is in direct communication with the new moon eclipse in Libra on October 14th, the week before December 14th, and the week after will have an eclipsy feeling related to what it is that you are releasing and need to release in the Libra part of your chart. There are videos that I did on transits on the Libra part of the chart and the new moon solar eclipse in Libra that you can refer to. Very important part of these two weeks. If it feels eclipsy and chaotic, it is. Don't, don't, don't. If it feels like changes in the air and certain energies are hard to handle, and of course Mercury is retrograde, so there could be communication, misunderstandings, and mercurial prankishness that is also occurring at this time that you have to watch for and manage. It's not, it's not the easiest couple of weeks, the week before and after December 14th, but with Mercury retrograde, you've got to take a look at the 48 to 72 hours before and after Mercury stationary today and January 1st or 2nd for hints of what is coming up. How could it be related to Mercury trining Jupiter? How could it potentially change? You just need to be watchful for it. What are you going to commit to? How are you going to make sure that you're taking accountability for your decisions with regard to details to the best of your ability and remaining in alignment with whatever it is that you feel is in alignment with the North Node in Aries and Jupiter and Taurus? If it is related to that compass or that desire, that goal or that carrot at the end of the stick that really made its presence felt in a significant way by the end of July of 2023. And that has had a series of not yet, not yet, not yet. We move forward and then there's an issue. We move forward and then there's an issue. And then we can't move forward fast enough. And we don't, this feeling of pieces being moved around on the chessboard and we are just not in control. But with the new moon, do take advantage of the opportunities because as long as you're comfortable with what you're choosing, it could very well be that it moves you further along the path. And even if the opportunity itself does not promises more than it delivers or does not end up panning out exactly the way it is outlined while Mercury is retrograde, it may pan out in a different way. And if it is the right opportunity for you and alignment for you, you will adjust and be able to take advantage of it. Or it might get you to a point that furthers your progress towards whatever it is that you're holding in your heart and what your goal is in the Aries and Taurus part of the chart. Okay, I will leave it at this. Happy New Moon and Sagittarius. Enjoy at least the fact that it might be bringing in a certain amount of, especially after the exhaustion prior to a new moon, it might at least bring a certain amount of energy and vitality in. And Yeah, I leave it at that. I leave it at that. Feel free to comment, like the comments and the likes give greater circulation. If you feel that anyone would benefit from watching this video, please feel free to let them know. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the wiggly bell icon next to the subscribe button so you're notified when I do new videos. Thank you for your support. Take care.